Hold up, let's get real. Welcome to Real Talk with Ronnie. Today we have Hillary Matt, founder of Hillary Matt Interiors, a design studio in New York City. And also you guys do work in New York, New Jersey, the Hamptons, Connecticut, wherever you'd like. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on social media at Ronnie Calra and listen to us on the podcast. Hi, Hillary. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Um, when we were talking on the phone, I wanted to really understand how you got started because I remember saying to you, like when you're little in school and people are like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Nobody says interior designer and nobody says real estate broker. So how did you get started? Is this what you went to school for? Tell me everything. So it's not what I went to school for. And I actually feel like a lot of people who are in the industry also didn't go to school for it. I feel like Interior design is something that you can't really be taught. I mean, you could be taught how to do drawings and scaling and all that stuff, but good taste, I think, is something you're, like, born with. I, I feel like it's really hard. So I actually went to school for fashion, for apparel merchandising and business. Mm -hmm. um, and after college, I worked in the fashion industry for a year, a year and a half, and I was so unhappy. I thought it was my calling. Um, I was like, how could I not work in the fashion industry? Mm -hmm. But I just, for some reason, it was not for me. And I was looking for a job and one of my friends, my friend's boss's friend was hiring and she told me I should speak with her and she was an interior designer and I did and I took a leap of faith and now I've been doing this for like 10 years. Amazing. Yeah. And so when did you go off on your own? So I went off on my own about two years ago. So after I had my son, um, I stopped working and then I just ended up that I had people reaching out to me and I started my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's always really scary in the beginning when you start doing something on your own because yeah. you have no idea so if you're scary. going to succeed or not, but you just, if you don't do it, you're never going to know. Yeah. Right? So that's how you started. Fast forward to 2019 was a huge year from you. Um, that's actually when I started following you on Instagram. Obviously I'm in real estate, so I'm interested in interior design. It's around me everywhere I go. I have to be honest. I... I think I have a good aesthetic, but I definitely need inspiration. Like I have to look on Pinterest and on Instagram, like yeah. at your post when I'm in an apartment to help the owner come up with how it should look. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, and I say to that, I say to them, like there, there are professionals who do this, you know what I'm saying? But because I see apartments all day, I have somewhat of an idea of what's going on somewhat. Um, so 2019, you were featured in Architectural Digest. Yeah. So tell me about that. That was huge. That was like so exciting. It's I was waiting for that for so long. So I did my friend Ariel Charnas's apartment and both of us really... Huge influencer, by the way. Yeah, she's great. And both of us really wanted to be featured in Arc Digest. Um, a lot of other publications reached out to her and she was like, no, 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 I want Arc Digest. So we waited and waited and finally they showed interest and we shot it and it was, it was really cool. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I feel like Arc Digest for an interior designer is like... Grammys for a singer. Super Bowl, totally. yeah, literally yeah. the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, so that's phenomenal. Congratulations Thank on that. You. And then you did Holiday House. Yeah. So for those of you who've never heard of it, tell me about what Holiday House is and then how are you involved? So Holiday House is a show house in the city. Um, during the winter, it's in Manhattan. And during the summer, it's in the Hamptons. And it's a show house and they pick, depending on how many rooms there, there are, um, you know, 20 so designers to each do a room. And um, you get, you know, donations from companies you work with or um, companies who have, you know, fabric they want to give you or whatever, and you design the entire room. And then tickets are sold and people for, I think, about a month and a half can go and tour the entire house. And it's great for, like, ideas and to see other designers work. And so that was really exciting. And it's also charitable, right? Yes. All the proceeds go So towards. it benefits breast cancer research, which... I love and I yes. loved being part of and um, it was really fun to do. I've never had a job like that or I guess it wasn't really a job but where I could totally do whatever I wanted without a client. Right. So that was like a fun experience. For me. So is it located in somebody's actual apartment? So usually it's it's actually in a house that's for sale, like a townhouse that's for sale or that's been oh. for sale for a while to get traffic. So that's where we had it. Yeah. 
It's like we should get a listing and we could be the next holiday house. It was like a $20 million townhome. It was amazing. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And so you were also involved like with the board or you were chair. Yeah. So we hosted a young designers night, which we had about, um, I think there were 10 girls on the panel who spoke about interior design and other aspects um, of like the interior community. And we sold tickets and it was really exciting. And I I think it was great. It was a great night for everyone. Yeah. Um, so that's your professional life. I want to talk to you about your personal life. You're married. You have a cute little boy named Jones. Um, tell me about the working mom life because I'm always looking for ways to better myself as a working mom. And if you have some sort of secret to how you do it all or how you balance it, I would love to know. I mean, I would say there's no secret. It's hard. It's really hard. I mean, one thing for me is I'm lucky that I work for myself so I can, you know, sort of make my own schedule if there's something I need to be at for my son, I'll make sure that I'm there. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, it's really hard. It takes a lot of work. And I I mean, I have an amazing nanny. I don't know what I would do without her. And so like, that's a big part of it. And, you know, my husband also is like readily available. If like, I can't make it to something, he will. Right. Um, There's no secret. I wish there was. It's hard work. If anybody knows of the secret, please (laughs) tell us. Um, and then speaking of your home life, you're also pregnant with baby number two. Congratulations. And you know what you're having? A boy, another boy. The gender reveal right here on Real Talk with Ronnie. Is Jones excited? Does he even know what's going on? He like sort of knows. And I ask him what's in my belly. He says baby, but I don't think he knows what he's in for. Right. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be tough. Yeah. That's going to be, I don't even know how I'm going to do that. That's like a whole other thing. Yeah. Someone told me that when he comes to the hospital to meet the baby, yeah. give him a gift. I heard that too. From the baby. Jenny Mona told me that. Oh, of course she did. Yeah. The mom of all moms. Yeah. So that's something smart because then I feel like they'll be more excited. For sure. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's something that I anticipate is going to be hard. I'm not pregnant by any means, but <laughs> one day, you know, I hope to be again. Yeah. And it's going to be tough because right now they're the center of, yeah, of course. everyone's. Like, my daughter is the first grandchild, so she is... Yeah, same with, same with my son on my yeah. side, yeah. Okay, amazing. And congrats again on number two. I'm so Thank excited you. for you. When are you due? I'm due June 5th. So tell me about working while pregnant, because when I was pregnant, I honestly felt as if it was another job. Yeah. Um, and I had a great pregnancy. I was very, very lucky. Like, thank God I had a great pregnancy. However... It's another job. Um, You're not yourself and you're not yourself for so long. Yeah. And I feel like we want to prove to the world that we could do everything. I know. But it's, tell me about that. I mean, I find it was hard. Yeah, it's really hard. I'm lucky. I'm I'm not sick. I don't have morning sickness or anything. So thank God for that. But I'm so tired. I don't remember last time being this tired. So a lot of times I'll be working in at two o'clock, like I'll just have to go home and take a nap. Like I can't even function if yeah. I don't like lay down. So that's really been the hardest part is that I'm just tired. But other than that, um, you know, I've had it pretty easy and I'm lucky, but the exhaustion is just beyond. Yeah. You're literally creating life. Yeah. I mean, how are we expected to do work? Um, have you found, this is a little tough question because I found when I was pregnant that When I went on pitches, I was scared when I was actually showing. If I wasn't showing, I definitely didn't disclose the fact that I was pregnant. But when I was showing, I obviously, it was one of the first things I said. I found that clients, men or women, were hesitant because obviously we're going to take time off. And I didn't blame them, but it did hurt my feelings that I probably wasn't going to get the job or wasn't going to get the listing because they were anticipating that I was going to take time off. And I remember saying to them, like, I have a really great support system. I have a team. Like, I'm still going to be involved, and I will do all the showings that I can. But the first month after I give birth, like, you can't expect me to show your apartment. Right. Um, However, I can be involved in all the negotiations. And some people were okay with it, and some people weren't. And they obviously didn't tell me that the reason they didn't hire me was for that. Right. But I'm sure it had something to do with it. Right. Um, And, you know, that's just life, and I guess it's okay because that – part of your life comes and goes. Um, but it really hurt me at the time. Did you find that that happened? I was really nervous to tell people I was pregnant. I like, I feel like I waited so long to even start telling people, Mm -hmm. but the reaction from my clients was actually great. I, I was scared that they wouldn't want to work with me or they would be nervous that I wouldn't be able to get stuff done, but none of them 
all of them were so excited. And when I said to them, don't worry about your house, like don't worry about anything, all of them were like, I'm not worried, don't worry, everything's fine. Good. So it made me feel a lot better, but for sure, I feel like there's like this stigma with like a pregnant woman working and that we can't do it. And you know, I would never want to let my clients down. I would do everything I can. And plus I have a team Same. also and you know, we, the show must go on. Right. So. And that's like, that's why you have people there to support you. Yeah. I mean, I was in the office with my first, the, you know, when I had my first contraction, like I had it in the office at my desk totally. and I was like, I guess I have to go now. Yeah. So right. you, know, you it, work till the end, you work till the end. And then I came back like sooner than I planned yeah. on it because I wanted to, um, you know, our jobs and our careers are such a big part of our life and we yeah. care about it as much as we care about our children. Yeah, of course. I mean, as weird as that is to say. Yeah. So going back to work life, yeah. um, being that I'm interested in this, tell us about some trends that you're seeing. Cause I feel like wallpaper and really cool wallpaper yeah. is like a thing now. I have clients where one of them has a powder room and there's zebras and it's red Love that. with zebras all over. <laughs> and then another client of mine has cheetahs and they're kissing. They're standing and they're so kissing cool. and it's all over the wall. And I actually like it, but a lot of people I get weird reactions from. Yes. Um, so is this a thing? Is this so, animal print wallpaper? For sure, animal print wallpaper, I would say. But wallpaper in general, I always love. It always helps to finish a space or make it feel warm, I guess. Things like animal print or, you know, what's on the wall now is very, you know, selective for the client. You know, uh -huh. some people will love it. Some people will hate it. But I always love wallpaper. And besides from just wallpaper, I've been doing a lot of textured walls. Um, you know, whether it's Venetian plaster or another plaster finish or concrete on the walls. Just mm -hmm. like something to like make a space feel warm and it's not just a plain painted wall I've been doing a ton of which I love I've noticed a lot of the thread wallpaper yeah that's really cool raw. I yeah. love that I love that look um and then one thing I noticed about your holiday house bedroom was there was actual flowers oh, yeah so that was like an art installation it was really cool this amazing. artist amazing yeah it was amazing and I feel like people are doing that a lot too like especially yeah. with kids bedrooms balloons flowers yeah as a lot of that like not, 3D sort of art is yeah. something cool and helps add to a space. Yeah, for I sure. love the 3D effect. Yeah, I feel like so. it's so much character. Yeah. As long as it's not within reach of your children. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's good. We can't rip it down. All right, so now it's time to get real because you are on Real Talk with Ronnie. I want to hear some horror stories. I want to hear about your annoying clients because I've got plenty and I'm sure you've got some too. Yeah. Weird requests that you may have had or people that are just difficult to deal with. Tell me what's going on. So I've had plenty of horror stories. I mean, you know, especially in New York City with like things not fitting in the elevator or even getting up to the apartment, like that stuff happens for us on the daily. But aside from that, I had this one client who called me and he was a bachelor and he had this beautiful apartment and I was like, what could be wrong with that? Like, that sounds amazing. Easy. Like a guy is so easy. Like I'll pick out, you know, cool things. And that was that. So we went to the first meeting and his mom was there and I was like, all right, whatever, this is interesting. And she was very opinionated. And then the next meeting she was there and the next meeting she was there. And then we would go to meet a delivery and she was there. And it was a nightmare. I couldn't even believe that this mom was involved in everything. He's, you know, 40 years old or something. Wow. And it was just ridiculous. So that was a nightmare experience for us. I've never, ever dealt with that before, but... It was funny looking back at it now, but sure. it was definitely a lot of work. You got through it, but that's something you don't expect, especially yeah. because he hired you and then here's his mom yeah. kind of bossing you around. Yes, it was very interesting. Oh, yeah, we've got that. Yeah. We've got that a lot. Yeah. We've got clients who, you know, unfortunately are getting divorced and were hired by the person who technically owns the house. Right. And then we have to deal with the other person who may not be emotionally okay with what's happening. Right, of course. Um, yet we have to ask them every time we enter this yeah. house and it's difficult. Yeah. Um, and then when we do enter the house, they're very disrespectful in the sense that they just leave things everywhere. And so, you know, one example I have is I literally have to go to this house an hour ahead of time and do dishes and move underwear in the bathroom and just touch, you know, this person's belongings. It's very personal. <laughs> it's very personal. And, you know, I am not your cleaning lady, but... We have to do what we have to do to show this apartment, and right. I and I have no problem getting on the floor and scrubbing it right. because I want to sell right. of course. Um, this property. So, but I have plenty more. Um, <laughs> and then one question that I ask all of my guests: yeah. If you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? 
So I think I'd be like an esthetician. I love really? like pimple popping and like all that Disgusting. sort of thing. I know. It's so funny and random. And you definitely watch Dr. Pimple. Love. Love. <laughs> My husband gets so mad when I turn it on, but I don't know why. Something about all that. I just like love. And small world, we go to the same dermatologist. We do. And she's the best. She's the best. <laughs> Dr. Linkner. Yeah. Um, who I hope to feature on Real Talk with Ronnie one day. <laughs> Um, but that's so funny. Like, so do you have, like, are you into cleansing and beauty? Yeah. Like I'm not like a, I mean, I have a skin routine that she gave me, but I'm not like crazy about skincare. It's just more so like the pimple popping aspect of it. I don't know. Like cleaning out your face. I don't know. Something about it. I think is cool. You're just not grossed out by that. I don't know. My dad's a doctor. My brother's in medical school. I feel like it's some sort of like medical thing that runs in my blood, but I don't know why. I just was always drawn to that. Interesting. Yeah. Clearly, you're succeeding in interior design, but <laughs> so you I don't never need to be know. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much, Hillary. Don't forget to tune in and subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on social media at Ronnie Calra. And follow Hillary at Hillary Matt Interiors. Thank you. Thanks.